They read the same Torah. They remember the same temple. They call themselves Aim Yisrael, which means the people of Israel. But when you sequence their DNA, something unexpected emerges. Two Jews from opposite sides of the world. One from a shtetl in Poland, with memories of pogroms and ghettos. The other from Morocco, whose family traces back to the Jews of al Andalus, the golden age of Jewish Spain. They sit together, pray in the same Hebrew, and chant from the same scroll. But their genetic histories, they speak two separate, though converging stories. Stories of exile and survival, of assimilation and separation, a bloodline shaped by war, faith, and foreign soil. This isn't just anthropology. This is the hereditary map of Jewish identity. And the question is, who carries the blood of ancient Israel more directly? And what does Jewish mean genetically? Let's follow the code. You're watching The Chronis, where we don't just follow history. We trace it back to its molecular roots. Today, we enter the world of genetic genealogy, where DNA becomes a time machine. We'll unravel the hereditary tailies of Ashkenazi and Sephardic Jews, two faces of Judaism with one soul, and divergent paths through time. Judaism is not just a religion. It is a civilization, a memory, a living lineage, one that stretches back more than 3,000 years, rooted in the ancient soil of Canaan, Judea, and Samaria. But the Jewish people? They are not monolithic. They are a tapestry stitched together by exiles, migrations, and reinventions across time. By the Middle Ages, the Jewish diaspora had split not in belief, but in geography and experience. Two dominant branches began to define Jewish identity across continents. Let's talk about the Ashkenazi Jews. The name Ashkenaz first appears in the book of Genesis, but by medieval times, it came to refer to Germany and its surrounding lands. Jews who settled in the Rhineland, later spread into Poland, Lithuania, and Russia, became known as Ashkenazim. Their story is carved into the harsh winters of Eastern Europe, forced into ghettos by Christian monarchs. Subjected to pogroms, violent riots where entire villages were burned, families slaughtered, synagogues torched. Yet out of suffering came culture. They developed Yiddish, a fusion of medieval German and Hebrew. They built insular communities, preserved rabbinic scholarship, and passed down traditions and whispers from Warsaw to Minsk to Brooklyn. But it was the 20th century that would leave the most searing mark. Six million Ashkenazi Jews wiped out in the Holocaust, a genocide that didn't just murder individuals, it decimated entire bloodlines. On the other hand, the Sephardic Jews Derived from Sephard, a poetic biblical name for the Iberian Peninsula, Sephardic Jews thrived for centuries under Muslim and later Christian rule in Spain and Portugal. This was the era of Al-Andalus, a golden age of philosophy, science, and Jewish-Muslim coexistence. Great thinkers like Maimonides and Judah Halevi walked the streets of Cordoba. They wrote in Hebrew, they debated in Arabic, and they spoke Ladino a Judeo-Spanish tongue infused with Hebrew and Ottoman elements. But in 1492, the dream ended. Ferdinand and Isabella signed the Edict of Expulsion. The Inquisition followed. Forced conversions, torture, burnings, exile. The Sephardim scattered to North Africa, where they merged with Mizrahi Jews. To the Ottoman Empire, where sultans welcomed their scholarship. To Salonika, Istanbul, Fez, and Jerusalem carrying with them their songs, their scrolls, and their names. Despite centuries of separation, despite different languages, empires, and pressures, Akhenazi and Sephardic Jews remain anchored to the same covenant. They prayed toward the same city, Jerusalem. They kept the same Sabbath. They mourned the same temple. And they carried within them the mythic identity of Israel. But while their souls remain united, their bodies evolved differently. Different lands meant different diets, pathogens, climates, and over time, different genetic influences. So the question becomes, if both groups descend from the ancient Israelites, if both groups preserved the faith of Abraham, 
Isaac and Jacob and what remains in their DNA. What does heredity reveal about who they are, where they've been, and where they began? Let's dive deeper. Genetic research into Jewish populations began in earnest in the early 2000s. Scientists wanted to know, do Jews share common ancestors? Are they genetically distinct from their surrounding populations? One of the most significant studies came in 2010, published in Nature. Researchers analyzed genome-wide data from 237 individuals, including Ashkenazi, Sephardic, and Mizrahi Jews. Their conclusion? Jews from different parts of the world, despite geographic separation, still form a genetically coherent group. In other words, yes, Jews from Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East do share a common Middle Eastern ancestry. That ancestry points back to the Levant, ancient Israel, Canaan, and surrounding regions. But there's nuance. While both Ashkenazi and Sephardic Jews carry Israelite markers, they differ in how much genetic mixing occurred during their diasporas. Ashkenazi Jews show signs of significant European admixture, especially maternal lines. Sephardic Jews, though also admix, retain a more direct link to Middle Eastern ancestry. One group adapted in Christian Europe, the other moved to Islamic lands and the Mediterranean world. Different environments, different patterns of intermarriage, different genetic consequences. Let's break this down further. To trace ancestry, scientists use two powerful genetic tools. Y chromosome DNA passed from father to son. Mitochondrial DNA passed from mother to child. When researchers studied the Y chromosome of Jewish men, they found a strong and consistent Middle Eastern signature across both Ashkenazi and Sephardic populations. This suggests that the paternal lines, the male ancestry, remain fairly stable, going back to the ancient Israelites. But the mitochondrial DNA told a more complex story. In Ashkenazi Jews, the maternal lines were often traced to non-Middle Eastern women, likely local converts in Europe centuries ago. The theory is that small groups of Israelite men settled in Europe, then married or converted European women, whose lineages now appear in Ashkenazi mitochondrial DNA. In contrast, Sephardic Jews often show mitochondrial DNA still rooted in the Middle East and North Africa, indicating less mixing, or at least more regional continuity. In short, Ashkenazi Jews equals Middle Eastern fathers plus European mothers. Sephardic Jews equals Middle Eastern fathers, plus often Middle Eastern or North African mothers. Another key difference, genetic bottlenecks. Ashkenazi Jews, due to centuries of isolation in ghettos and persecution, underwent a genetic bottleneck, a dramatic shrinking of the gene pool. A small number of founders, possibly fewer than 400 people, gave rise to millions of Ashkenazi descendants today. This bottleneck has consequences. It increases the prevalence of genetic disorders like Tay-Sachs, Gaucher's disease, and BRCA mutations. It makes Ashkenazi DNA unusually homogeneous, which is both a scientific blessing and a medical challenge. Sephardic Jews did not experience this same bottleneck to the same extent. Living in more diverse, often urban and trade-oriented environments, they intermarried more with local Jewish and non-Jewish populations, maintaining genetic variety. This diversity preserved a broader window into the ancient genetic landscape of the Near East. No discussion of Jewish heredity is complete without addressing the Khazar theory. In the 8th century, a Turkic kingdom in what is now southern Russia, the Khazars, allegedly converted to Judaism. Some argue that Ashkenazi Jews descend not from Israelites, but from Khazarian converts. This theory gained traction in anti-Zionist and anti-Semitic circles, claiming modern Jews are not real Jews. But genetic science offers a strong rebuttal. Ashkenazi Jews do not show significant Central Asian or Turkic DNA. Their paternal lines, again, the Y chromosomes, are overwhelmingly Middle Eastern. At most, there may be minor Khazar mixture, but the genetic evidence confirms deep ancestral ties to the Levant. In fact, Kohanim lineages traced through a specific Y-chromosome marker called the Cohen-modal haplotype appear in both.
Ashkenazi, and Sephardic men at comparable rates. These lineages trace back over 3,000 years to the priestly class in ancient Israel. The conclusion? Ashkenazi Jews are not Khazars. They are Israelites who migrated and evolved in Europe, but their roots remain in the soil of Judea. What does all this mean? Genetics has confirmed what tradition long believed, that Jews from across the globe share common ancestry, despite language, culture, and geography dividing them. Yes, Ashkenazi and Sephardic Jews took different roads. One passed through Warsaw and Vilnius, the other through Fez, Istanbul, and Baghdad. But in the genes of both groups lives a trace of ancient Israel. And in the face of exile, war, assimilation, and genocide, they held on to more than just religion. They preserved the echo of their past in their blood. DNA does not replace Torah, but it offers another scroll, a genetic scroll, that tells the story of a people who refused to vanish. In the end, genetics doesn't prove who is a Jew. Faith, community, memory, those are not stored in DNA. But heredity helps us understand how people wandered the earth and still remember where they came from. It tells us that exile was real, that survival was not random, and that identity can outlive empires. From the hills of Judea to the streets of Brooklyn and Casablanca, the story continues not just in books, but in the blood. This has been The Chronist. Don't just watch history. Trace it.